Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. Fast Fender, the easiest way to attach and adjust your fender. Easy Docker, docking made easy. It's so peaceful here, you know, when you're fishing Labrador, it's all wilderness. As a matter of fact, it's one of the wildest territories in North America. Very few roads, and we know all about the roads because we drove 31 hours to get here. You know, for those of you that may not know, the brook trout is a char. So it's in the same family as the lake trout and the Arctic char, and the Dolly Varden char and the bull trout that's out west. And they're really called Eastern brook trout because they originate from here like the east coast of North America, even though they're now all over the world, you know, they've stocked them everywhere, including in Ontario, you know, even out west as far as BC. We're using single barbless hooks, so it may fall off, but that's okay. Yeah, it's a nice female. Come here. I'm gonna just try to get the hook out of its mouth very carefully. Oh, look it, isn't that gorgeous? Look at those colors, can you see the blue They've got like uh, little red spots inside. I see a spot there. The vermiculation's on the back. Classic, classic brook trout. And this guy's gonna be in really good shape because I'm not even taking him out of the water. Come here. You gorgeous thing, you. I fooled you with that fly. I don't know what you thought it was. It's gonna hold it one more time and then we'll get it, get the fly out of its mouth. Isn't that gorgeous? You can see those nice white highlights. A master painter colored this fish, and I just heard a big fish roll behind me. So I'm just gonna pop that fly out. It should pop right out there. Look at, isn't that beautiful? And right out. You know, this week we've got the pleasure of fishing in Labrador in a location that I've been fishing for almost 30 years. It's called Igloo Lake Lodge. Now to get to Igloo Lake Lodge, you can't drive to it. It's a flying destination only. You can either drive, either from the US or Ontario, and uh, in some cases, you gotta take one or two ferries to go across some bodies of water like the St. Lawrence or the Saguenay River or the Atlantic Ocean from Newfoundland to get to the mainland, and then you drive. In our case, we decided to drive, and it's actually from Ontario, about a 31-hour drive. Some of the roads are a little bit bumpy. There's some washboard areas, but a lot are uh, nice. They're nice highways. The next morning, we took off out of a place called Happy Valley, and uh, we flew with Jim Burton, who provides the air service um, using one of the planes from Igloo Lake Lodge. And it's amazing what you see when you fly to the lodge. It's about a half an hour to 45 minute flight. There's so many lakes, the wilderness is so lush. And then of course, when you arrive at the lodge, the adventure begins. Oh, what a feeling. Head shakes, it's the bigger fish. So you didn't see what happened before I set the hook. That fish boiled. It took me about two or three false casts to get the line out there and get it just past where the fish rose and he was out hunting. One of the things that I do if I'm using a barbless hook, I try to keep my rod tip up high so there's always pressure on the fish. It's another nice female. It's definitely a little bit bigger than the other one. I'm impressed how it hit right away it's hooked on the lower jaw, which is nice. Let's see if I can turn it around here. I'm gonna try. Oh, they're so healthy. Look at how thick this fish is. It's literally wider than my hand. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm being gentle with them. If I get a really big one, I'll probably use the net, but I'd rather not use the net. These fish are so precious. What they have here at Igloo Lake is a single barbless hook and live release only. You can take pictures of your fish, but you can't keep any fish whether it's here for eating or to take home. And I think that's a great policy. Can you see how bright this fish is? They're beautiful, hooked very lightly. Okay, time to get it close. You know, I've traveled all across the world, but I gotta tell you that some of the wildest territory in North America 
is Labrador and Newfoundland. Labrador has very few roads and most of it is just wilderness. And one of the things I love about it, it's the home of the Eastern Brook Trout. So whether you call them speckled trout or brook trout, they're one of the most beautiful trout that you can catch. And they're actually part of the char family. They've been distributed and stocked throughout the world. So you can fish for them in Western North America. There's places in Europe where there's brook trout all over, but this is where they originate from. Closed captioning is brought to you by K100. We make water burn. So a couple of head shakes. He's, got, he's just dogging it. I'm using a nine foot fly rod. So you can see the nice arch in the rod. This is what fishing at Igloo Lake is all about. Feels like I've got a lake trout on, but it's not a lake trout. It's a big brook trout. Oh, gorgeous. Got the net wet. Net nice and wet. Oh, colors on this fish. Yes. I've got a flexible tape measure. I don't need to get like a super accurate measurement, but I don't want to, definitely don't want to weigh a fish like this. This fish is 23 inches long. So that's a really nice brook trout. The guide is estimating that it's about seven pounds. I measured it, it's almost two feet long. That's a big brook trout. So we're taking extra special care because this is a big fish. It's got great genes for reproduction. I'm actually holding it upright. And these nets that they have, they're almost like a cradle, which is perfect. But look at, look at the dark bands that it has on its belly, on the sides, the white, the white. They're such a beautiful fish. I'm gonna try holding it upright and just pulling it out of the net and releasing it. It's probably gonna take off because we've kept it in the water. Look at how white that fish is. What a gorgeous brook trout. Okay, brook trout, there you go. I brought a lot of flies with me, but these flies were provided by the lodge. So you can purchase them and they have all kinds. If you look, you'll see that they have one thing in common. All of these streamers have a weighted head of some kind of weight. Also, all of these are very natural color. They're like off a green color or off brown. There's only one that has gray and white in it. All these are streamers and they're designed to be fished in deeper water. When I say deeper water, we're only talking about two to four feet deep, but below the surface. So if, unless you see the trout feeding on surface insects, or you try some of the larger flies, like a bomber fly that floats, or you try a, a mouse pattern, if they don't take those, you're probably better off to go to a streamer like this and fish them near the bottom. So the way you decide which one to use, if the fish are aggressive, they'll hit the larger ones, like the one at the front here, that's this olive green color, or the white one. If the fish are less aggressive, you always go with the smaller fry. Brook trout, even though we call them brook trout, are actually part of the char family. So they're the same family as the Arctic char, the lake trout, the Dolly Varden char, the bull trout. And they're an amazing fish, number one, because of their coloration. When you see the colors of a male or female brook trout, they're brilliantly colored. They have these vermiculations all along the back that I think is for camouflage when they're feeding, especially in shallow water. They have brilliant sides of like olive and blue halos with red spots inside. The males have black stripes on both sides of their belly. They have white out outlines on their fins. They're an amazing fish. The other reason, besides their looks, is that they take flies really well. Even here in Labrador, where they can reach weights of over 10 pounds, and three to five pounders are commonly caught every day, they feed on a lot of insects, either insects that are in the water, those are called invertebrates, or once they hatch, on the airborne insects, like mayflies and caddisflies on the surface. And one of the things that they do here, they also feed on lemmings. Yes, lemmings. So a lot of times you can use a very large mouse pattern or a fly called a bomber and just drag it along the surface so it makes a V and the trout come up and just nail it. It's a wonderful place if you like to fly fish for brook trout. Good fish. You know, just a few seconds ago, 
Travis said, why don't we change colors? And we went from a natural colored fly, which we believe is what they've been feeding on, kind of scuds, to a striker fly. So we went to a, a nice white fly. That is a good size brook trout. Fantastic trout. You know, we can relax, talk about life and stuff, yeah. you know. So you don't mind me making you work hard, position the boat, climb over all the gear and everything? No, sir. No, no problem. You're if a great. We keep landing like this. You're a great guy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And we're being real sportsmen here. You know, these big brook trout are rare. They're real trophies. Travis, you think he's ready to go? Oh, he's definitely ready to go. Yeah, because he's upright. We didn't even have him out of the water, just to show the viewers. Okay. Yeah, he's ready. So I'm going to go down and just hold him up for one sec, because I don't think he's going to look at beautiful fish half in and out of the water. I'm going to take my hands away, and we're going to call this uh, a, a pretty perfect release. You know, here in Labrador, the reason why the waters are so rich with brook trout is because most of the lakes are expansions or part of tributaries and river systems. For example, Igloo Lake is part of the Eagle River system. So the fish can move in, they can move out, there's tons of food, the water's always circulating, and uh, they grow really big. I mean, some of them grow up to eight pounds. The main lodge houses the dining room. They have beautiful walkways that take you from the float plane where the dock is and the boats are, all the way up to the main lodge and also to the other cabins. Raymarine Electronics. Raymarine, simply superior. Here at Igloo Lake Lodge, they have a single barbless hook policy, fly fishing only, catch and release. And I really admire that because it truly is a world-class fishery. I mean, there's very few places in the world that, where you can catch in one day brook trout up to 10 pounds, where five pounders are common. We're talking about brook trout over 24 inches. That's two feet long. So to protect the fisheries, they put this in place. So you can't have a shore lunch with a fish. They do beautiful meals. You can't take any fish home. And the guides are very professional. They really stress to handle the fish carefully, to revive the fish, especially in the summertime, you know, because here in Labrador, uh, you can get temperatures of 80, 90 degrees in July and August. So the surface water temperature can warm up. And when the brook trout go into that shallow water, for a short period of time to feed. If you hook one and they have to fight there and use their energy, they can be under a lot of stress. So even in our case, we tried to keep the fish in the water. If you're gonna hold them out of the water, do it very close to the water, get a quick picture, and then release the fish unharmed. Because the potential here of producing another world record for brook trout is very real. A lot of people get excited when they go to land a fish, you know, after they work so hard to catch it. I've learned over the years, just take your time. If the fish gets off, that's fine, especially with a barbless hook. You can see that hook just um, lightly move at the mouth. Yeah, look at gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I'm keeping it in the water because in the summertime, you know, even in Ontario, we've had temperatures of 80 degrees. So literally the fish is reviving while I'm holding it here. Look at the halos and spots on this one. Man, they're so gorgeous, beautiful fish. So he's actually had time to revive. He probably wants to swim away. I want to be very gentle. Look, isn't it nice that that hook just falls out? And there he goes. Perfect catch and release. So the warmer the water is, especially for brook trout, they can't tolerate warm water like brown trout or rainbow trout. So it's very, that's why they're, they're native here to the East Coast. And the water's always, you know, literally refreshed because it's moving water, all these expansions. There's a, a, stre a stream, I think it's a live stream, spring that's coming in right there, cold water. You can see the bubbles coming out. That's one of the reasons why this spot is so good that Travis took us to. But literally the fish can go from one lake to another because it's all interconnected by river systems and tributaries. And that helps to keep the water cooler as opposed to just the lake that's stagnant, you know, and that can warm up, especially if the deepest water is only 20 feet. So I'm Craig Gillingham, owner operator of Igloo Lake Lodge, located here in the wilds of Labrador. So we're located 72 miles southeast of Goose Bay, only accessible by our 1951 de Havilland Beaver. It's about a 45 minute plane ride, beautiful experience, uh, but we're so, it just makes us so remote, so beautiful. Our season is a short season from middle of June to middle of September. Uh, here at Igloo Lake, you can fish for brook trout, pike. We also have optional flyouts for Atlantic salmon and Arctic char. 
For the Atlantic salmon, we take you to uh, Owl Brook on the Upper Eagle River. Uh, for the Arctic char, we take you to a special place called Char Lake at the base of the Torn Gap Mountains. Uh, the brook trout here at Igloo, uh, in the lake you're going to catch brook trout that range from uh, 7 to 9 pounds. Not uncommon to get them over 10 pounds. Uh, we have a river system here at Igloo Lake. It's, it's our incubator. Uh, you catch smaller brook trout here, 1 to 3 pounds. You're going to get an abundance of them. Uh, and not uncommon to get 4, 5 and 6 pounders at the stream. Uh, the northern pike as well here at Igloo. Uh, you, you can fish for those and you'll have a lot of action, a lot of top good surface action with the northern pike. So here at Igloo Lake, our facilities have uh, single bedrooms and double bedrooms, uh, private washrooms, we have a kitchen, dining room. You're gonna be taken care of as soon as you get off the plane here with our wonderful staff. Uh, gods are very experienced. Our cook is exceptional, second to none. Meals are world class. Here at Igloo, it's not just lake fishing. We also have excellent river fishing, stream fishing, and we have sister ponds as well that we can either hike to or we can take the airplane and go to those ponds as well. So here we use 25 foot Gander river boats which are very sturdy boats. Guide ratio it's one guide per two guests. We also cater to single travelers if, if they want to have a guide for themselves and a private bedroom we do that as well. At Burton's Pond which is our, one of our sister ponds we utilize 16 foot Lund boats. While you're here at Igloo Lake, there's always a chance you may run into some unique wildlife. You may see some golden eagles, you may see some black bear, uh, caribou, offsprays. We even have a little pet here. Uh, it's a little groundhog we call Momo and, and we feed the, the groundhog. Uh, truly a wonderful experience here. You, you, can, you can see lots of wildlife. It's, it's very beautiful. So we are 100% catch and release here at Igloo Lake. Uh, it was implemented about 20 years ago uh, from the previous owner and dividends have paid off big time. Like we have really big brook trout here at Igloo Lake. Um, as I mentioned before, ranging up to 10 pounds in the lake and above. Uh, September of 2017, we actually had a world record here on a 10 pound test. It, the world record was 10.4 pounds. When you come to Igloo Lake, probably the first thing that hits you is all of the rocks. You probably see the boulders behind me, the boulders I'm standing on. The lake is only about 20 feet deep at the main part, and it's a pretty big lake. But all you can see all over is boulders and rock piles and reefs. And all those shallow areas are areas that produce a lot of food to help brook trout grow really big. The way that you fish the brook trout here is either by boat, they have these beautiful Gander Bay boats that are like uh, long canoes, they're like 20, 22 or 25 feet long. They have small outboards on them. They're extremely comfortable and even if two people are fly casting out of the same boat, the boat is so long and narrow, it's very stable, but there's no problem two people fly casting at the same time, either in the same direction or in opposite directions. It's very comfortable, you can put all your gear in the boat, the boats can go into very shallow water, so they're ideal to fish the lake and get right in, in between these boulders where a lot of times you'll see the brook trout come up and boil. And man, the big brook trout make big boils and as long as you cast your fly right over it, you usually get a fish on. Rod Runner Canada, grab and go fishing. You know, besides fishing the main Igloo Lake, there's a beautiful stream that goes out of Igloo Lake down to the next lake. And oftentimes over the past, even when I was here with my wife, after dinner, we would go down. It's only about a hundred yard walk to the edge of the stream, which actually is quite wide. It's almost like a pond. There's flow there. And you would see trout rise and we would cast. I've actually done complete shows fishing just out from the dining room and going down. I think they call it the cook's pool. It's really close. Or you can put your waders on and walk down the stream. There are lots of pools. The stream isn't very large, but it produces brook trout up to eight pounds. You know, when I'm fishing here at Igloo Lake or different parts of Labrador, I usually just take a couple of fly rods in the boat. Both of them are nine feet long and they, they're matched with the right size fly reel. 
They're two piece, so they're easy to transport. You know, on this trip, we actually drove, so there was no problem just having the rods in the car. And on the float plane, as long as you have like a real protector and you put some elastic bands around the rods and they're broken down, they can put them in the plane very easily. But I find having the two piece nine foot rods is ideal. Um, a 7-8 weight, for those of you that know fly fishing terms, with the weighted forward fly line floating is perfect, and also a 9 weight. The 9 weight is a little bit heavy because you're not going to get fish that are 15, 20 pounds, but if you're casting a big fly like the mouse pattern that's here, which oftentimes works really well, if you get a back wind, it's kind of hard to uh, do a back cast and to have it flatten out before you do your forward cast. So if you're using a bulky fly like this that has a lot of air resistance, I find that a nine weight rod works really well. Timing for Igloo Lake is really any time from about June to September. It's like an all season fishery. Early in the year, the water's colder and the fish can be a little bit deeper. So you have to use sinking flies. As the summer progresses, when you get into July and August, usually you get really good insect hatches. There's a little creature called a scud that you can see even see if you look in the water, standing at the dock, that the brook trout feed on, and uh, it's, it's like a freshwater shrimp. So scuds work really well. And then of course, when the water really gets warm in the shallow water, all of the dry fly patterns that imitate the different types of airborne insects works really well, especially the bomber flies and some of the mouse patterns. This is literally a brook trout paradise. It's so peaceful. The only noise right now is me talking and the sound of the reel and the water just gently hitting the side of the Gander Bay boat. Beautiful fish. I love those highlights on the fins. Even in this dark water in the lower light, they really stand out. Gorgeous. Probably one of the nicest fish to get on a fly. Definitely for looks wise. And brook trout too are pretty aggressive. Look at beautiful blue spots. Gonna hold it out. Can you see those blue spots? They almost look like they've been airbrushed. But you can't do that with a brush. Look at gorgeous fish. Okay, I'm just gonna slide that hook out. There. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful female. There. Nice release. Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. Fast Fender, the easiest way to attach and adjust your fender. Easy Docker, docking made easy. Here at Igloo Lake Lodge, it's about the total experience. You know, when you arrive, first of all, when you fly with the float plane, there's so much to see, there's so many lakes. And the thought that goes through my, my mind is, so many places, so little time, right? So even in a lifetime, a human lifetime, there's so many lakes to fish here in Labrador, and I fished my share. 